Today, we're going to talk about a program I like to use for image editing, Photopea. Photopea is a great free alternative to Photoshop that runs from your browser window. It's an advanced image editor that can handle both roster and vector graphics. It can do almost everything that Photoshop can do, and most likely, Photopea probably does everything you need and more. So, let's take a look at how to get started using Photopea. Photopea runs from a browser window, so just go to photopea.com to load it up. Let's start out by creating a new project by clicking on New Project, or going to the File menu and selecting New. Before creating the project, we can set the name, which I'll set to Project 1. Choose the dimensions you'd like the image to be. I'll leave it at 1280 by 720 pixels. Also, you can change the unit that's used to measure the image size, 2%, millimeters, or inches, which is useful when you're creating an image for print. But when creating an image for web, pixels is the best choice. You can choose your dimension sizes from a bunch of templates here. There are lots of really useful templates for things like creating a YouTube cover image, a Twitter header, common screen sizes, and more. Once you enter your dimensions, you can choose whether the background is white or transparent here. I'll leave the background white and click Create to start the project. Once you do that, the project is opened. There are four sections to the layout, with the working area here in the center. The working area is where we'll be creating or editing our images. On the left, we've got the toolbar, which is where you'll find all of the tools available to edit images. You can click to select a tool, or press its corresponding hotkey, which you can see if you hover over the tool for a second, like M for the Rectangle Select tool, or V for the Move tool. On the top, we've got the menu bar, where you can save and load projects, and other things like adjusting canvas size, rotation, and more. Below that, we have a second menu that handles various properties for whatever tool you currently have selected. This changes when you select a different tool. On the right side of the screen, we've got the sidebar, where you can create layers, access the history, and handle swatches. At the top of each of these sections, there are these little arrows, which you can click on to expand or contract a section. When expanded, you can see all of the options available on this panel, or we could minimize both of them so that we've got more room on the working area. I like to leave the right panel expanded while keeping the second panel minimized. We've got a couple options if we want to add an image to the project. You can go to File and choose Open in Place and choose the image you'd like to use. Or you can load an image from a URL. If you choose to load from a URL, just enter the URL and then select Current Project if you'd like to add it to the current project and click OK. The easiest way to add an image to a project, though, is to just drag and drop it onto the canvas, which creates a new smart object. When you first do that, the image is placed on the canvas with its actual dimensions, which you can change by dragging any of these handles. When you drag the handles, the image is resized and stretched to fit the dimensions you choose. Depending on how much you change the dimensions, the stretching can cause the image to look smashed. This is because the aspect ratio of the image has changed. If you want to resize the image, but keep the aspect ratio the same, you can hold down Shift while resizing the image. This lets you resize the image but keep its original aspect ratio without any distortion occurring from altering that ratio. Once you have the image at the size you'd like, click on the Confirm button in the menu bar to place the image. Once it's placed, you no longer see the handles to resize it. If you need to resize the image again, with the Move tool selected, check the box next to Transform Controls. Then you can resize it as you'd like. Also, if you hover just outside of the image, you can click and drag to rotate it. Once you're done, just uncheck the Transform Controls option to get rid of the handles around the image. Now, we've got two images on our canvas, and when I checked the Transform Controls option, we were only able to resize one of the two images. That's because each image that you add to the canvas is added to a new layer. You can see all of the layers in your project here in the Layers panel. Currently, we've got three layers, the background, image one, and image two. The bottom layer on this list, background, is drawn below the image one layer. 
Likewise, the image 1 layer is drawn below the image 2 layer. If you want to move, rotate, or resize the image on the image 1 layer, select it in the Layers panel, and then drag it with the Move tool. And you can check the box next to Transform Controls and resize or rotate the image. If you wanted Image 1 to be on top of Image 2, you could drag the layer up above the Image 2 layer. Now this layer is drawn on top of all the layers below it. If you click on the eye icon next to the layer, you can hide or show that layer. Also, if you right-click the layer and choose Blending Options, we have some styles that we can apply to the layer. We're not going to cover all of them yet, but you can do things like add a drop shadow, an inner or outer glow, or a stroke, which we'll use on these pictures. Stroke adds an outline around the image. To activate a blending option, check the box next to it and select it to edit any parameters. You can change the color of the stroke here, which I'll set to black. On the layer we added a blending option to, it now says EFF and has an arrow here. If you click on that arrow, a list drops down of all the effects applied. You can copy the layer's effects by right-clicking the layer, go down to Layer Style, and choose Copy. Then right-click the other image layer, go to Layer Style, and choose Paste. Now both the images have the same layer style. You can delete a layer by selecting the layer and click on the trash can icon at the bottom of the layers panel or by just pressing the delete key. You can undo what you just did by pressing Ctrl Alt Z or redo it with Ctrl Shift Z. Now that we only have one image, I'm going to resize it and make it a little bigger. When you drag an image around and you're trying to center it, when you get the image centered, you'll see this red line. That means that the image is vertically centered. If I move it down some, now it's horizontally centered as well. I'm going to center it vertically, but a little bit above the horizontal center. Next, I want to change the background color to black. To do this, select the background layer and hover over this little gradient box in the toolbar. Each of these tools that have a small arrow on the right corner have multiple tools within them. We want to use the Paint Bucket tool. We can use this to fill an entire area with one color. To choose what color you want to use, click on the top of these two color boxes, set it to black, and choose OK. With the background layer selected, click the canvas to fill the entire layer with the color black. These two boxes are your primary and secondary colors. You can switch between them by pressing the Swap Colors button or by pressing the X shortcut. Now that the background is black, we can't see our stroke anymore, so double-click the stroke effect and let's change the color to white. If we wanted to add some text, you can click on the Type tool or just press T to activate it. Once you've selected the Type tool, you can set some properties in the menu bar, like the font, size, and alignment. We can set the color of the text here. I'll set it to white. Click on the canvas to place the text, which creates a new text layer in the Layers panel. I'll enter some text, the first image of the sun setting on Mars. With the layer selected and the Type tool selected, you can change the size of the text. I'll make it a little bigger. Then select the Move tool by pressing the V shortcut and center the text under the image. Now we have a bunch of empty space around the image, so we can use the Crop tool to crop out the blank areas. You can select the Crop tool here or just press the C key to activate it. Then drag out a box around the area you'd like to keep. Once you have the selection you want, click on the Confirm button to crop the image. Next, let's add another layer above the text layer, but below the image. Select the text layer and then click the New Layer button at the bottom of the Layers panel. When adding a new layer, it's created right above the layer that was selected. Now that we have a new layer, 
Let's switch to the Rectangle Select tool by clicking here or by pressing the M key. With the Rectangle Select tool, you can select an area of the image by dragging a rectangle over the area you'd like to select. Then we can fill this area with some color, and whatever we do will affect only the selected area. We could use the Paint Bucket tool, like we did earlier, to fill in the entire area. Or we can use the Brush tool to paint with the cursor inside the selection box. You can select the Brush tool here, or by pressing the B key. With the brush tool, you can paint color onto the image using a brush shape. The color you use to paint with is the primary color down here. I'll set it to white, and let's paint around the sides of the border. We can switch back to the selection tool and select just part of the area we painted with the brush. and hit Delete to delete just the portion of the layer that's selected. Let's create another layer above our image layer by selecting the image layer and clicking the New Layer button and press B to switch back to the Brush tool. In the menu bar, we can click here to adjust the brush size, shape, and hardness so we can turn the size of the brush up and paint a larger area of the canvas. Or we could change the brush shape which affects how the brush paints pixels onto the canvas. Let's set the brush to 76, round and noisy marker. And when we draw on the canvas, the new brush affects the way the pixels are painted. You can also use the eraser tool to erase any part of a layer. Select the eraser tool here, or by pressing the E key. Then, just click where you want to erase, and we can remove pixels. You can also change the blend mode of a layer to change how it blends with the layers beneath it. With the layer selected, drop this box down here, and choose something like Overlay. And you can see the layer now lets some of the lower layers through and overlays itself on top of them. If you want to select a more precise area of a layer, you can do that with the Lasso tool. With the Lasso tool, you can draw a line around the area of the image you want to select, instead of drawing a whole box around it. This lets you select the exact pixels you need to. Let's start a new project by going to File, New. I'll leave the default settings and click Create. Let's change the background color to gray by entering the hex code 373737 and using the paint bucket tool to fill the background. Now let's add some text. Select the type tool by pressing the T key. Before entering any text in, let's set the color of the text up here to white. Let's turn the text size way up to 135. And change the font to Dink 1. Click to place the text and enter something in. I'll put todaystoots.com. Next, let's take a look at some of the blending options. To open up the blending options, double click in this area just to the right of the layer's name. You can use Bevel and Emboss to add depth. I'll set it to Emboss and increase the depth and the size. This uses a combination of shadow and highlight to emboss the letters. We can add a drop shadow and you can change the angle of the light source here. Changing the opacity of the shadow either fades it out or makes it stronger. You can set the distance to change how far the shadow is from the text. Spread and size can be used to affect the sharpness and the blur of the shadow. We can overlay a gradient, and if you want to set the colors of the gradient, just click this bar here. 
you can drag these handles around to tighten up the spread. You can double click on the handle and set its color. And you can double click in a blank area to add a new handle and set the color at that point of the gradient as well. If you want to delete a handle, just select that handle and click delete. I'll set it back to white and click OK. You can change the scale, which determines how much area the transition between the two colors covers. If you turn the scale all the way down, the transition is very small, almost immediate. But the higher you turn the scale up, the more that area the transition covers. Then we can add a stroke to sharpen up the edges a bit. Set the color to black. and the size to one pixel. Right now, the opacity is too high, and the line is too strong. If we drop the opacity to about 35%, it embellishes the edges of the text so that they stand out over the shadow. One of the cool things about Photopea is that you can have multiple instances of some of these blending options on one layer. Any of the blending options with this plus sign next to it can have multiple instances. So let's add another stroke by pressing the plus symbol here. The other stroke is black and it's placed on the outside of the text. Let's set the color of this stroke to white and place it on the inside of the text. We also want the size on this stroke to be one pixel, but let's bring up the opacity sum to make it stand out a bit more to about 46%. The two strokes combined help the text to pop out and look more even over the shadow. We can use the Crop tool to get rid of some of this extra space. Press C to select it, and then drag around the text. Make sure not to cut off the shadow, and click Confirm. Now, if we wanted to save this, we have a couple of options. First, you can save the entire project file as a PSD or you can export it as a PNG, JPEG, SVG, GIF, PDF, or any of the other options under More. I'm going to export it as a PNG, and since a PNG can have a transparent background, let's get rid of the background layer before we export it. All you have to do is click on the eye icon next to the background layer, and it will no longer be shown. Or you can just delete the background layer altogether by clicking the garbage can icon. Then I'll go to File, Export As, and choose PNG. That brings up the Save for Web prompt, where you can change the format, the width and height, and the quality. If you scroll up or down with the mouse wheel, you can zoom in or out and get the whole image in frame. If you want to lower your file size, you can drag the quality slider down until you start to see a visible loss in quality. So if I drag the quality to 50%, I can get the file size down to 21.1 kilobytes, down from 50.6 at 100% quality. Once you hit save, you can choose your file location and you'll download the finished image. There's lots more you can do with Photopea. These are just the absolute basics, but I hope this will help you to get started and show you some of the things that you can do with it. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, let me know if there's anything you'd like to learn how to do in Photopea. Thanks for watching. See you next time.